Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part, we're going to continue focusing on functions, and we're going to cover how to return and receive multiple values, the main function, and a whole lot more. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so let's just jump right into it and create a function. What this function is going to do is it's going to both multiply as well as divide two different values and return them both. And it is very simple to return multiple values from a function. All you need to do is separate the values that you want to return with commas. So let's just go number one and number two, and then we can go num1 divided by num2. And then we can call this, and we can also receive those values just like we did previously by separating the values with commas and then go malt divide and let's say we want to pass in five and four inside of there we're then going to be able to get those values and now put them on the screen so we can say five times four is equal to and malt and then do the same thing for our division like this and then divide and if we run it you can see we get exactly what we would expect. All right, so simple stuff. Now what I want to do is create another function that's going to return a list of primes. So if you're not aware of prime numbers, basically a prime can only be divided by one and itself. So for example, five is prime because one and five are its only positive factors. However, six is a composite because it is divisible by one, two, three, and six. So what we're going to do with our function is we're going to receive a request for primes up to an input value. And then we're going to use a for loop and check modulus equal to zero for every value up to the number that we want to check. So we'll say define is prime going to receive the value that we want to check up to. And then we're going to say for i in range and we'll start at two up to the value they want us to check for. And then what we'll do is, if any division has no remainder, we know that it isn't a prime number. So we'll say if num modulus i is equal to zero in any situation, we'll return a value of false because we know that it isn't prime. And yes, I know there's other ways of checking for primes that are a little bit quicker, but I just want to keep this pretty straightforward. Otherwise, if we get through the end of that, we know that we can return a value of true. And let's just move that over here. All right, so there we go. So then at this point, we can say get primes and max number. We're going to create a list to hold our primes equal to, and that's how we generate an empty list. And then we're going to create another for loop that is going to cycle through the primes from 2 to the maximum value that's requested. So I'm going to say for num1 in range 2 up to max number if, and we're going to call our isPrime function, pass our number inside of it. And if that returns a value of true, we're then going to add it to our list of primes. And how we do that is we say append and put num1 inside of there. And then after we do that for everything, we can return our list of primes. Then we can ask the user how many values we want or how many they want. So I'm going to call this max num to check is equal to cast this into an integer from the string that it is. Search for primes up to, and then I'm going to go list of primes is equal to, and we can call get primes max num to check, and then we can cycle through and print those out. So I'll say for prime in list of primes and print prime and it'll say search for primes up to 
and we can say something like 100 and it's going to go right through there and very quickly generate that list of prime numbers. All right, so cool stuff. Nice to go and actually create a real project. And now I'm going to cover how we will be able to accept an unknown number of arguments into a function. All right, so let's go and create a function. And all it's going to do is receive an unknown number of arguments, and it's going to sum all of them. So I'm going to call this sum all and receive an unknown number of arguments. You just put a star inside of there. And then I'm going to say args. I'm going to define sum equal to zero. And then I'm going to cycle through that list because that's what that is. Or that's the way that it's treated. And then I can just go sum plus equal to whatever the argument is. And then after it's done cycling through all of them, I can say return sum. And I'm going to call this sum1 just because there's naming conflicts with the keyword of sum. And then I can come in and go print sum and sum all. And I can throw as many values in here as I would want. It doesn't matter. It's automatically going to work. And if I run it, you can see we get our sum that we would be expecting. All right. So we can receive an unknown number of arguments. And now what I want to be able to do here is calculate different areas for different types of shapes. And I'm going to show you how to route to different functions depending upon the type of shape that we want to work with. And we're also going to use the main function for the first time. So I want to use a math function. So I'm going to import our math module. And we're going to create a function. And it is going to be called get area. And it's going to be passed a shape. And it's going to route to different other functions depending upon whatever that shape was that was passed inside of it. Now I'm going to convert this into a into lowercase just so it's easier to do comparisons. So I'll say shape and lower, covered lower in a previous tutorial. Then what I can do is say if shape is equal to rectangle, well in that situation I'm going to call another function called rectangle area. Else if shape is equal to circle, then I'm going to call circle area. And I'll create these functions here in a second. Else, I'm going to say, please enter rectangle or circle as an answer. So I'll say print, please enter rectangle or circle. Okay. And now what I need to do is to create those two different functions. So I'm going to say define rectangle area. Length is going to be asked for. So I'm going to say float input. Enter the length. And I'm going to do the same thing for width. Let's change this to width and change this to width. Calculate our area, which is just length times width. And then I can print that out. So print the area of the rectangle is, and then follow that up with the value for area. Going to do something quite simple or similar for the circle area. Just going to copy this. Define circle area. Here I will ask for radius. Convert it to a float. And I'll say enter the radius. And then area is going to be equal to math pi times get the power function as well. Radius to the power of 2. And then I will print out that information. The area of the circle is and I'm going to be using format for this. So remember, if I want to just use two decimal places with my output, I do a colon, dot, two, F, close the curly bracket. And then I can come in and say format, and area is what I want to output. And there we go. Now, we often are going to want to place our main program logic in a function that is called main. So now what I'm going to do is use all these functions that we just created. So I'm going to ask the user what shape type 
they want me to get areas for and I can say input get area for what shape and then after I have that I can call a function above which is going to be get area this guy up here so I can say get area and pass in the shape type that I'm looking for and then to call for my main function to execute inside of Python automatically I just go and call main like that and if we run it we can say get area for what shape I could say rectangle it's gonna say enter length I can put 10 inside of there and 10 it's automatically going to work I could run this again I could type circle inside of there enter the radius I could say 10 and it's gonna calculate that area as well alright so cool stuff and that's gonna be all for now but get ready for the next video because we'll be covering lists and we'll look at numerous different list functions how to sort lists with the first algorithm that I'm gonna cover which is the bubble sort and a whole lot more and like always please leave your questions and comments below